So you're on, um, what business leaders do you most respect and why? <laughs> uh, you're going to get me in trouble. Um, I mean, I respect business leaders that are incredibly productive and innovative and, and, and generate enormous results. And, you know, in the past, you know, I've talked about the fact that I, I really admire Jack Welsh, although I, I, got, I got at least one email saying that I completely misunderstood Jack Welsh and, you know, I was completely wrong about him, but uh, I thought he was the, the former CEO of GE. I mean, former, a long time ago, CEO of GE. Um, I, so I, I, I really had a lot of respect for him. I sort of speak a few times, I've, I mean, on, on video, and I've seen, I've, I've seen some of his books that are good, I think, his leadership principles are good, good principles. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm a fan of his. Um, but, you know, I'd say over the last... 15 years, I'm mainly a fan of the tech guys, right? So, so I think, I think uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Bill Gates. I think he's super smart. I, I think all these conspiracy theories right now going around, I don't know if you guys have seen them, about him wanting to take over the world, about him wanting to poison us all with his new vaccine, about him wanting, uh, he's, he's, um, he wants to shrink the population of the world so the vaccine's going to kill a certain percentage of people, all this garbage. Um, it's just horrific because I think, I think while he's wrong philosophically and politically, while all these CEOs, most of these CEOs are wrong philosophically and politically, they are brilliant producers. They're brilliant managers. They have extraordinary minds. Um, when Bill Gates approaches a problem, he approaches it in a first handed way, like a business problem or even a philanthropy problem. If you follow his philanthropy, it's first handed, it's original. He tries to solve problems. Um, he, he's not looking for government for solutions. He's trying to solve problems. Uh, so I, I, I think, I think uh, you know, I'm a huge fan, have been for a long time of, of, Steve, jo of, of Steve Jobs. I mean, until he died, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a long time Apple user and, and really dedicated and Steve Jobs. I just think his arc through the industry has been fascinating and you know, I, I, if, if you know, I put up a, a debate today, um, so a few hours ago, between me and a socialist, and it's a socialist who's written a lot about tech, and he despised Steve Jobs. I mean, if you watch the, if you watch the debate, he's like, oh, Steve Jobs yelled at his employees. I said, I wish I could be an employee of Apple just so Steve Jobs could yell at me. I mean, how cool would that be? Um, I mean, he was, a, he was a true genius and a perfectionist and a valuer, real valuer. I, I mean, I, I haven't really followed um, the, the you know, kind of the trajectory of the Google, the initial Google guys, but they obviously did spectacularly well. I, I admire a lot of the venture capitalists. I have a huge respect for, you know, the old line, you know, Sequoia Capital and people who work there and, and them in business. Um, I'm sure I'm missing people. Uh, about Ken Mollis. Yeah, I mean, Ken Mo, this is both, I mean, an acquaintance, I know him quite well and, and has done a phenomenal job, you know, is John Allison, of course, who I missed. How could I miss John? I mean, John Allison who was a CEO of BBT and, and, and took it from a little farm bank in uh, Wilson, North Carolina to the, the 10th now, I think the sixth largest bank in the United States, our financial institution in the United States uh, out of uh, Winston-Salem. So, um, Ken Moellis, who built his own investment bank, he started it in the midst of the Great Recession in 2008, 2009, and has built it into this independent, fantastic. And Ken and John, examples of two CEOs who have the right philosophy, who, who are, you know, I don't, I don't know if Ken wants to be known as an objectivist, but it's about as true as it goes, right? Uh, about as close as it gets. Uh, he's spoken at our events. He's, he's, he's spoken about the influence Atlas Shrugged has had on it. You know, I'm an admirer of people like Lars Christensen in Denmark, who started Saxo Bank and built that up again, somebody who was, who was heavily, heavily influenced by, by, uh, by Ayn Rand. Um, and then, I, you know, I've met a ton of hedge fund guys who are brilliant, who are spectacular. I've, I've met a lot of just, you know, old line businessmen who just started with nothing and built a business. And it might not be splashy like uh, Apple or Microsoft or Google or something, but it's, it's, they've done all the hard work, they've created value and they care about every little element within their work. So there's a, there's a lot of those. America's filled with, with 
medium sized businessmen who have really succeeded, who become millionaires and more, who have built up. And I've met a lot of people like that. You know, that's the one upside of fundraising. Generally, I hate fundraising, but the one upside of fundraising for the Institute was you get to meet a lot of business people. And um, it's always a pleasure, you know, whatever field they are. Uh, but the Giants, I mean, the Giants are historically a huge fan of um, uh, Rockefeller, of Carnegie, uh, and of, J of J.P. Morgan, the banker. And of course, how could I forget uh, Michael Milken, uh, who was one of the great financiers. And not just, not just a genius financier, but somebody who inspired his employees. Ken Moellers was an employee of Michael Milken, as was Leon Black, who today is a gazillionaire um, private equity guy, as were so many successful people today were employees of Michael Milken and he inspired them and he worked unbelievable hours and he, his team, he had a team and they really functioned as a team. And it, it's, you know, you read about it, it's truly inspiring. And all of them, all the people around him went on to have phenomenal careers. So America's, it's amazing how many great businessmen they are. And one of the tragedies, I think, in objectivism and among objectivists is uh, there's a Marxist tendency among objectivists. You know, Marxists and leftists think that everything is politics. Everything is politics. So if you, if you talk to Marxists, art is about politics. There's no metaphysical, there's no moral message in art. It's all political. Everything is pure political art. Relationships, uh, uh, every aspect of life is pure political art. So they can't judge a human being separate from his politics. And there's too much of this in the objectivist movement. We can't look at somebody like, like uh, you know, even, even, uh, even uh, what's it, Zuckerberg at Facebook and, and what a phenomenal job he's done creating a platform that, you know, half the population of the earth enjoys. And you can't, they can't separate that. He's genius as a productive person from, oh my God, he's a lefty. Uh, you know, it's not, I don't judge people by their politics. I judge people by their character and one of the most important aspects of character is productiveness. Right. Yeah, Jonathan wanted to say I, something. I'll just quickly throw in you around. I, I talked to a, a prospective investor the other day. He was saying, not a flashy person, but a woman now in her late 50s, quick story, she came to the country in her 20s, didn't even speak English. She became a doctor. The long story is worth, she's a, 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 a property portfolio now worth $10 million. Wow. And she's, she's a successful doctor. So she's this... You know, again, not a flashy thing, but truly an American success story, uh, the American dream over and over and over again. That It really gives me hope for the future. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, you remind me of a businesswoman. I, I don't think I ever met her in person, but I spoke to her a couple of times on the phone. Dollar Moore. I don't know if you've ever met, heard of Dollar Moore. Dollar Moore was the first woman to have a seat on the New York Stock, New York Stock Exchange. I think that's true. Um, and uh, she was a, she was, she, she came from nothing. She was Are you she, thinking Muriel Siebert? No, so maybe I'm I'm so it's still Dollar Moore, but maybe she's not the first woman all to right, have it. All right, sure. She, she was um she came from nothing, South Carolina, uh what you would call white trash, right? And um she she became uh very senior in Wall Street. She became a and she she married she married uh, the billionaire with a with kind of a Indian American Indian uh name, Lightfoot or something like I can't remember. Um Anyway, she has had this phenomenal success. I mean, the business school at the University of South Carolina is named after just an amazing woman and went back to South Carolina, has invested a lot in South Carolina, uh, particularly, so she, she, particularly in trying to invest in, trying to get other you know, uh, kids from poor families who have talent to get them, uh, to help them, um, you know, to increase their opportunities. So there's so many good stories about amazing American entrepreneurs and American business people. And yeah, I mean, Jonathan's right. You meet them and some, many of them are immigrants. Many of them were poor when they grew up. I mean, real, um, the old, the, the 19th century style, bootstrapping yourself, succeeding still exists. It still happens in this country. And it's, and it's, it's tragic that we kind of demean that and, and particularly the way, the way we think about immigrants. What we need today what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, 
not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, iranbookshow, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...